How's it going, BMW fans? Welcome back to BMW Review. Today, we're going to be going over 20 plus mistakes that BMW owners make. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, Beam Review, what we do here is showcase all the latest BMWs. We also do some really cool hidden tips and tricks and features reviews. So if that's something that you guys are into, subscribe to the channel because we put out content every single week. So ladies and gentlemen, this one is going to be a part two to the previous video that we did on BMW mistakes that BMW owners make. The video did do really well, so we're actually going to be going over 20 plus more common mistakes that BMW owners make. And definitely stay tuned with the channel because there are a couple of these that could actually damage your vehicle. Also, before we get started, we did start doing BMW courses. As of right now, we do have the BMW X3. It is a fully loaded course, so definitely check that out. It goes over some really important things on how to set things up, such as the BMW app the bmw profile and the videos do contain over a hundred different hidden tricks that you might not catch right off the bat so definitely check that out at the end of the video the link for that is going to be right down below and without further ado let's go and get started so ladies and gentlemen for the first one and i can't believe that half of the customers that i bump into still do not have the my bmw app ladies and gentlemen if you have a bmw you must have the app there are so many reasons why you should have it and just to name a couple of them if you look right here the app can let you know all types of status updates for your vehicle you use it to check your tire psi the app can also let you know if the windows are open if the car is unlocked you can also check to see how much fuel you have and last but not least for some vehicles that have remote start you can do remote start right from the app as well and you can also schedule your services that are due also so ladies and gentlemen please make sure you download the app and make sure you have that set up and please make sure that that is the first thing that you set up whenever you get a brand new BMW. Now this one is super super important if you just got your BMW or if you plan on getting it but if you look right here at the screen you can see that the trunk height for BMWs whenever they're brand new they're set to their highest setting. Now granted it's not that that high and for the most part you may not have to change that setting at all but let's just say for example if you do have a smaller garage that has a low height to it there's a good good chance that your trunk is going to hit the top. So definitely watch out for that. Throughout the last three years, I have had a, a good handful of customers who had complained that their trunk actually hit the top of their garage because of the height of the garage being low. So that is something to definitely watch out for. It was something that happened to my customers literally just a week and a half ago as well. So it is a pretty common thing that may happen. So definitely watch out for that. If you need to adjust the height for that, what you would do is click on car and then you would go into settings. And then right after that, just scroll over to where it says doors and vehicle access. Once you go into that, you're going to see tailgate. And then you can see the height right over here. By default, it is set to the highest height, but you can drop it down by four levels. It's also great to do if you are somebody who is short. So then that way you can reach the button on the top of the trunk to close the trunk. But yes, definitely make sure that your height is properly set up before you open up your trunk whenever you get into your garage. For number three, it is gonna go to the BMW owners that have the 3D view or parking assistance plus. If you do decide to have your vehicle park itself, the only thing that you must watch out for is curbs. This is also stated in the manual too. Whenever the vehicle is doing self parking, whenever it is parking itself, it may or may not detect the curbs at all times. I have tested the feature a couple of times and I did find myself going over a curb. So that is definitely something to watch out for if you have your vehicle park itself. And once again, you do have to have the parking assistance package to have that feature in the first place. But yes, it may not detect all the curbs. It will do a great job of detecting vehicles and an okay job on detecting the lines of a parking lot. But yes, simply watch out for curbs and also watch out for street cones as well. Don't ask me how I know. For number four, it is going to have to go to the driving profiles. Now, before we do continue to keep on going, I did want to give a quick shout out to one of my subscribers right above here. They were able to give me a good chunk of all these as well. So quick shout out to them. But yes, going back to driver profiles, after you have your BMW app all set up, the next thing you must do is if you have iDrive 7, you must set up a driver profile by going into here. But yes, definitely make sure you set up a driver profile because then once you set up your driver profile all your settings within the vehicle such as your lighting controls your safety controls your presets down here your seat setting and even whatever settings you have saved on your instrument cluster will all save to your driver profile this is especially crucial if multiple people are going to be driving your vehicle at all times the other benefit of having a driver profile too is say for example whenever you get into your next vehicle or next bmw all your settings within the vehicle have the potential to transfer into that next one as well and also 
God forbid, if your vehicle had to do a full reset where it would reset the vehicle to the factory settings, all you would have to do is log back into your profile and then your settings would come back to life because your profiles are actually stored on the cloud. But yes, definitely make sure you set up your driver profile. If you're not sure how, we do have a video up on how to do that. You must also make sure that you're using the same key fob because your driver profile will save to your key fob. So definitely make sure you keep on using the same key fob. And last but not least, do not save your settings on guest profile again. You are gonna lose all your settings and then you're gonna waste time to reset all those all over again. Do not use the guest profile. Set up your own driver profile and you will be glad that you did. This one's a big one if you plan on buying a BMW or maybe if you plan on buying your next one. The biggest mistakes that new BMW owners make is the fact that they do not research beforehand. BMWs can get really complicated in terms of how many different trims that they have per vehicle. So let's just say for example the BMW 5 Series has probably up to five different trims now and if you walk into a dealership not knowing exactly what you want you might regret that later on. So definitely make sure you do your research. BMW has a website online where you can customize and build your own vehicle. I would highly recommend doing that first and then going in, into a dealership so then that way you know exactly what packages you want what options you want for your vehicle and this will also save you time whenever you're test driving your vehicle and on the verge of buying it this next one is crucial many may not know about this but if you were to hit the parking assistance button which is this P with a cone it would bring up your parking assistance menu now if you have again the parking assistance plus you're gonna see a screen like this but if you don't, you're simply just gonna see your vehicle with sensors front and back. But all the BMW should have this feature inside the settings. If you go into here, and if you see right here where it says active PDC with brake intervention, by default, it is off. But what this means is simply that if the car thinks that you're gonna back up into an object, you can have it do a emergency brake and then the vehicle will stop all by itself to prevent you from hitting the object. Now what some people make the mistake of, and this is also one of the ones that could damage your vehicle, is that they would have this feature enabled and then what they're doing wrong is the fact that they are relying on this system to have the vehicle stop all by itself and whenever they park every single day. Now granted, it is a safety system, but it is not something that you would be using every single day to rely on for parking situations. It is not something that is gonna work 100% of the time. So definitely watch out for that. The vehicle does take in into an account how fast you're going or how slow you might be going. So that is the reason why it may not always work. So definitely watch out for that. We have had reports of vehicles backing up into their garage because they were relying on this system to have the vehicle stop for them. Do not do that. This next one is also important. Again, if you have the parking assistance plus package, there is a feature right beneath here called backup assistant. So what backup assistant can do is remember your last 160 feet of driving and then it can help you reverse out all by itself without you having to do anything at all. It will turn the wheel all by itself. It will control the gas or accelerator all by itself as well. But just remember the way that this works is the fact that the vehicle will remember your same steps that you used to get into your driveway. And the downside of that is the fact that if something in your driveway changes, let's just say for example, there might be a bicycle inside your driveway or something that was there that wasn't there whenever you were trying to get into your driveway, there could be a good chance that the vehicle might just hit that object that wasn't there before. So definitely watch out for that if you are someone who uses the backup assistant a whole lot. And again, this is only available for the vehicles that have parking assistance plus. Now for this next one, we're gonna be going over the spare tire or their lack of for BMWs. The majority of BMWs, they all have run flat tires. So because of that, whenever people do get into a situation where they have a flat tire, they might just come back here that there's no spare tire at all. If there is no spare tire here, your BMW has run flat tires. If you don't know what run flat tires is by now, the run flat tires, you could drive on those tires for up to 50 miles going below 50 miles per hour and it will be completely fine transitioning into the next mistake some bmw owners do not know that whenever they get a brand new bmw that their bmw comes with four years of roadside assistance and three years or 36,000 miles of maintenance free services for the next tip many bmw owners are not aware of this little sticker that's right over here that lets you know what type of gas you can put into your vehicle now what this sticker is basically saying the absolute minimum in terms of the octane that can go into your vehicle is actually 89, 
but the recommended one is 91. Now granted, you can put in 93 or anything above 91 as well, but do you really need to do that? You actually don't. Ultimately, it is your choice if you do decide to go with a 93. And the benefit of that is that it is much more cleaner gas that goes into your vehicle and you might feel a slight performance boost by doing that as well. But your vehicle would be completely fine with the 89 or 91. So do not worry about having to put in that 93 octane. This next one is what I like to call a fun one. Many BMW owners make the mistake of not subscribing to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty happy to say that we hit 20,000 subscribers and by following this channel, I can pretty much guarantee you that you might learn something by subscribing to this channel that you may have never known about. Again, subscribe to this channel so you can learn everything there is to know about your BMW and you have absolutely nothing to lose. For this next one, it's gonna go to the traction control button. Now the traction control button is gonna be this off button right here. I have had many customers in the past think that they are supposed to hit this and whenever it snows. Absolutely do not no, do no, that. No, if you do that, no. you could probably just slip off the road and that is something that you do not want to happen. So what traction control off does is simply turn off the traction control within the vehicle. If you don't already know by now, the only situation where you might be using this is if you're only stuck in snow stuck in snow keep that in mind what that would be simply used for is if you were stuck in snow you could turn off your traction and what that will do is allow the wheels to spin so that you can build momentum to get yourself out the snow that you may be stuck in that is the only time you would need to use your traction control off button you can also use it if you plan on doing donuts or going on the track with your vehicle but i believe that 95 percent of bmw owners may not be doing that so don't worry about that at all the majority of bmws are x drive and with that your all-wheel drive system is going to be on all the time there's absolutely nothing you need to do whenever it snows or if there's ice on the road you're completely covered if there was one thing that may benefit you just a little bit it would help if you go into eco mode whenever the conditions on the road might be icy or snowy. What that will do will simply dull down the sensitivity on your gas pedal or your accelerator. So the fact that whenever you start driving your vehicle, it'll start in a nice, gradual, slow way. This next one is pretty popular. Inside our intelligent safety button, one of the biggest features that all BMWs are starting to come out with, they all have active blind spot. Now we get tons of complaints about the blind spot detection not working. And there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, if you click on blind spot detection, you can see that there is a requirement for the blind spot to work. You have to be going above 15 miles per hour. Not only that, but with the blind spot system with BMWs, it is very, very speed sensitive. And what I mean by that, blind spot monitoring system may not always go off whenever somebody is inside your blind spot, whenever your BMW thinks that it's not a threat. The blind spot system takes into account the speed that you're going it also takes into account of the speed that the other vehicle that is hovering in your blind spot may be going as well. So what I mean by that, the vehicle right over here is way outside your blind spot going at a slower pace than you. The blind spot system will not go off or give you the warning. But if this vehicle is going at a faster rate than you are, the blind spot detection knows that it could be a threat to you. So it will give you a nice little glow on the triangle, letting you know that that vehicle may be a threat to you. I have seen this system pretty much work the best whenever you're driving on the freeway or the highway. It's not something that you're gonna see go off during the city because again, you do have to be going at a certain speed and it takes into account the speed that you're going, also takes into account the speed of the other vehicle as well. For this next one, it is a really important one to know about if you're going through a car wash. Now, when you're going through a car wash, it's quite normal for your PDC system to start beeping. If you don't know what PDC is, it simply stands for park distance control, which is the same feature that is located in this little P with a cone right over here. If you hit that, it does bring up your radar system. And usually whenever you're going through a car wash, the brushes that are cleaning your vehicle are gonna be all up on your sensors in the front of the vehicle and even in the back too. So what that will cause is tons and tons of beeping because those brushes are right along the sensors. If you want to deactivate that whenever you're going through a car wash, simply whenever you start to hear the beeps, just hit that button one more time and then that will deactivate that system for that time period. Also, the other one to mention whenever you're going through a car wash, you definitely wanna make sure that you're not in the auto hold mode. If you're somebody who, who uses the auto hold feature a whole lot, definitely make sure that the auto hold feature is off 
whenever you're going through a car wash so that your vehicle does not get stuck whenever, whenever you come to a stop. This next one's a big one if you're not too sure on how to use your climate control system. Now, of course, many of us, we simply leave it on auto, but many customers, they wonder on a nice cold day like this, whenever they get into their vehicle, that whenever it's on auto set to say, for example, 80 degrees, that the climate control is simply not blowing air. Well, there is a reason for that. Usually whenever you get into your vehicle, on a nice cold day like this, it's quite normal for the engine oil temperature to be very, very low. And usually whenever that happens, the reason why the car is not blowing air is because if the car is cold, the quality of air is also gonna be cold as well. So what the vehicle is trying to do is simply keep the air completely off, even though it's up to 80 degrees and on auto. And it's simply letting you drive the vehicle because it does help speed up the process of heating the vehicle back up as well. And then as your vehicle does become more and more hot, then that's whenever you'll start to feel the hot air blow through the vents as well. The mistake that many owners do is that once they feel the air not blowing, they, they simply go out of the auto mode and start to do things in, in a manual way. And that simply just makes your life more complicated because then you're having to adjust the stuff all by yourself. Simply just keep it on auto and let the car do its thing. The only thing you have to worry about is, is adjust the temperature and it's normal for the air not to blow again whenever the car is cold just let the car do its thing just drive the vehicle whenever it's cold out and then before you know it the air will begin to blow whenever the car knows that it can blow hot air this next one's a big one if you are somebody who leaves your key inside the vehicle whenever you park in your garage now it's not going to damage your vehicle or anything at all the only two things that will happen whenever you do that and i do not encourage doing this because of these two reasons whenever you do that the car can sense whenever the key is left inside the vehicle whenever it does that it will leave the screens and the ambient lighting on within the vehicle and it won't drain the battery completely but it will train your car's battery more than it needs to not only that too but keep in mind that whenever the key is inside the vehicle the key is also talking to the car so the battery on the key will also drain faster as well the best thing to do whenever you park in your garage simply just take your key out, just lock the car. By doing that, you'll let the car know that you walked away and then the lights on the inside will turn completely off and then you won't have drain on the battery in the car and on the key fob as well. For this next one, many BMW owners absolutely love their vehicle and I don't blame them because I do too. But one of the mistakes that they do is simply not driving their vehicle because it's too precious to them. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a BMW. Do not be afraid to put some miles on the car. You have it for a reason. BMWs are known for the drives, so definitely get it out the garage and have fun with it. At the end of the day, a car is just a car, so definitely do not make the mistake of not driving your BMW because these cars are meant to be driven. This one's a big one if you are someone who uses Spotify. Now in the BMW system, there are gonna be two ways to access your Spotify whenever you're connected to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And what I mean by that is, let's just say for example, you wanted to go into your Spotify, you're gonna see two different places where Spotify is located and one of them is one that you do not wanna use. If you were to go into media, there are some BMWs that inside media, you're gonna see the option to have Spotify here too. If you are connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you do not need to use the Spotify that is located here. That is simply for users who may not want to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Simply, the proper way to use Spotify is if you were to go into your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, to simply just use the Spotify that is located in those systems. And also let's not forget that if you do want to use Spotify or have it show up, on your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you do have to have Spotify Premium. Quite sure I've mentioned this one a few times, but I'll still continue to mention it because I still see many customers who do not know about this. Ladies and gentlemen, this button right here for BMWs is very, very important. Not only can it control the volume or mute whatever is playing. If you were having any software issues with the iDrive screen, or with your phone connection, there is a way to do a soft reset by holding down this button. If you hold it down for, let's just say, for example, 30 seconds, the screen on the iDrive system will go completely black. That's whenever you can let go. And what that will do will just simply refresh the whole system. And you will not believe how many problems that that has solved. And just by knowing that, you can save tons and tons of future trips to your dealer because doing that reset can solve many of those software issues. Now, this was a good one that we all are starting to get, but I will repeat it until 100% of all customers know about this. But yes, whenever you connect to the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, there are two different ways that you can use this voice command button. If you click it one time, you get your BMW personal assistant or voice command 
which you can tell to do things like lower down the window or open up the sunroof or even change the temperature within the vehicle. You can also tell it to change the lighting within the vehicle as well too. The other way to use this is if you hold it down. If you hold it down, you can get Siri or Google Assistant to pop up on the screen. You must use Google Assistant or Siri to make phone calls. If you try to do it through the BMW voice command, it will not work because simply your contacts that are on your phone are are uploaded into the Apple CarPlay system or Android Auto. So definitely keep in mind, I, I do mention this in quite a lot of my videos. There are two ways to use this. And these next few ones are not only BMW specific, but for all cars in general. But yeah, some of the things to watch out for. In the old days, it was quite wise whenever it was a really cold day out to have your car run for a little bit before you begin to drive. That is still a little bit true. It, it is a good idea whenever it's completely ice cold to just let it run for about 30 seconds to, to a minute before you begin to drive off. And if the engine is cold, do not over rev your engine or push it too hard. That is not great for the engine in the long term. If your engine is completely cold, simply just drive at a nice, normal, slower pace until the engine fully warms up. Do not over rev the engine whenever it is completely cold. It's not good for the engine at all. And that pertains to all vehicles, not just BMWs. So definitely keep that in mind. Also pertains to all vehicles as well. If you're parked on a steep hill, it still helps in this day and age to put on your emergency brake because that does help reduce the strain that is put on the brakes of the vehicle. Not only that, it does take pressure off the transmission as well. And it's less stress for the joints within the vehicle as well. So definitely put on your emergency brake whenever you're parked on a steep hill so it doesn't damage your vehicle in the long term. Whenever you get a brand new BMW or a brand new car, it is quite wise to let the engine break in a little bit. Now, what I mean by that is whenever you have a brand new car, you simply do not want to floor the engine. You want to let the car break in a little bit so that the engine gets very acquainted with the transmission. So a couple good rule of thumbs to know or practice is keeping your car less than 100 miles per hour and below 4,500 RPM. And by doing that, your vehicle will love you for that. And it will definitely help with your long-term reliability and any future issues that may come up. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, one of the biggest things that you must do for all vehicles and especially BMWs is do not miss your oil changes. Now, what I mean by that, the vehicle will notify you whenever it's time for an oil change, either on the screens here. Not only that, your app will also let you know as well. Oh, and then you can also use your app to schedule services as well too. So definitely don't forget to use that. But basically the benefit of making sure your oil is done is probably one of the most important things for all vehicles to do because, because everything starts with the oil. Now, if you go above a couple hundred miles, it's not too, too bad but it's highly, highly recommended that, that you do try to avoid that at all costs. And especially no matter what, you never wanna go above 1,000 miles after your oil change is due as well, because that will cause some issues in the long run. So definitely make sure you do your oil changes. It also helps to do this even before it's due. And also one cool little tidbit is that in order for BMW cars to be certified, the previous owner has to make sure that, that all the oil changes were done on time. So all the records of that are gonna be written down somewhere. So definitely watch out for that. You do not wanna miss your oil changes. It could even hurt the resale value as well. So definitely just make sure you do your oil changes. That's all the tips that I have for you all today. Again, subscribe to this channel and don't forget to check out that BMW X3 course. We are gonna be doing the courses for every single vehicle. So definitely stay tuned with the channel if you, if you wanted a course for your vehicle as well. Feel free to drop your questions down below. Subscribe to the channel as mentioned before. Stay tuned for the next one and have a great day.